Hello, Internet. I'm Jackie Fox, and I know I've been doing a lot of the Transcendence updates as shorts, but I tried to do this for Rain and Lastwell, and there's just too much to talk about for either one of them to cram it into a full minute. So we're going to have to take a little bit more time because holy crap, these are actually probably some of the strongest dream enhancement upgrades that I've seen. However, the other thing that I've got to say with that, and this is the part for both of them that I think is really pushing things over a minute, is that they're both first generation units. They're also both the protagonists of the original FFBE game from which this is spun off. So there's a lot of reasons to make these guys cool. I mean, they are essentially the end game promotion for a whole nother Gumi video game that you might be interested in. So it makes sense to make them pretty cool and to keep them relevant throughout the game. And unfortunately, I don't think that Rain especially has been super relevant, at least since uh, Fire got a Protaga tank in King Mont, um, who is just generally better than Rain all around. Um, Rain is the magical version of King Mont in that he is both magic based in damage and magic based in his ability to tank damage, whereas Mont is physical in both respects. So there is a way that there is no overlap. It, it Both can be strong at once, both can have their place within the fire element. They're not necessarily going to step on each other's toes, even though they are both fire tanks. So I think that making Rain good again will actually increase the variety of things that fire teams have at their disposal and make them a little bit more versatile and a little bit more future resistant, not future proof by any means. Um, fire had a long way to go and they've come a long way in 2023. I think this helps, but okay, I'm, I'm not going to shit on fire anymore. So uh, dream ability, first things first, 10% agility. This is a huge huge bonus for any unit that gets it this is one that i'm excited about no matter who it is on but i'm especially excited for it on a tank because tanks especially older tanks often have the disadvantage of being a lot slower than the rest of your units and that makes them naturally very bad at doing the one thing that they need to do as a tank and that is get out in front of your units and take damage for them so being able to get this guy more reliably onto the front lines ahead of your other units with increased agility, that is just such a big thing for him and his play style. Again, agility is king in this game. Anyone who gets 10% agility on anything for any reason, it's great. But it is especially great for the play style of a tank. So I love it on him. Love it, love it, love it. We're also getting 10 more AoE resistance, and this is going to be a running theme throughout this kid's kit. Now, the issue that tanks are running into in the modern day, at least older tanks especially, is that just having a lot of spirit, just having a lot of uh, a damage type resistance isn't really cutting it anymore. Because most damage types have penetrations, slash especially, um, magic attack especially. Magic attack and spirit was kind of this boy's thing. Um, also, defense and spirit penetration have become very common, not only among... Um, like getting too close to 100% has become common, just completely invalidating it for uh, modern DPS units, third generation DPS units. Um, second generation, you know, maybe 40 or 60 is more common, maybe 100 with buffs, maybe for a very short period of time. Um, but a lot of other non DPS units from second generation and back uh, still have trouble with spirit and uh, resistances, so he's still gonna be good against that. But really, he needs something else. He needs a new specialty to help him work in the modern meta, and AoE resistance seems to be a big part of that. But also, one of the very rare cases of getting three uh, upgrade, three passive upgrades on your dream ability, and all three of them being good in addition to that, elemental chain resistance of 40 for self. Now, since this is on a dream ability, this isn't a buff like it was for Alphonse. This isn't something that he has to activate and will only be around for three turns. He will always have 40% elemental chain resistance, which is a pretty big deal. It's, um, it's really unfortunate that his daddy's card, which he is featured on, does not work for him as a unit, does not include great swords whatsoever. 
Um, because unfortunately that card would have given him an additional 36 elemental chain resistance and that would have brought him up to 76 so that would have put him at a place where he can get really high for elemental chain resistance and also really high for AoE resistance because you'll notice that he also has 15 AoE resistance in his master ability too as well so that's 25 just off of this page so let's move on into his skill upgrade i didn't expect this to be good but holy shit, it's amazing um his skill upgrade this skill has been upgraded twice it was originally just 15 spirit then it was 15 aoe resistance in addition to that so if you're thinking about even before the upgrade add this 15 in with the 25 we just saw that's 40 percent aoe resistance already if you throw in a modern main vision card for aoe resistance that's going to bring you another 20. he is now at 60 percent aoe resistance and you could build up to increase that in a number of ways as well and i have seen from jp when this guy came out a lot of people who were able to get him at least uh at or near 100 percent aoe resistance which i think is going to be big now it's not the biggest thing because a lot of modern damage dealers have also been diversifying a little bit more between single target and multi-target attacks so this isn't going to mean that he is just going to be able to tank out certain people however he can um force them into targeting him exclusively which is going to keep his allies safe this is a really interesting way of modifying the AI of your enemies to make um, units standing around your tank a lot safer than they would have traditionally been. And I think this is a big AI modifier in a way that might get overlooked or would absolutely get overlooked in a one minute version of this video that I think is pretty important for him. But let's talk about the upgrade. We haven't even talked about the upgrade yet. The upgrade is going to give him debuff effect weakening 30% for self, which um, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be, um, and I'll be able to verify this as soon as this comes to the uh, English side of Wode of Calc. <laughs> but debuff effect weakening should reduce the effect of any debuff against him by 30 percent which um eh, i mean i guess it in some ways is better than the all or nothing version of this where it just has maybe a 30 percent chance of completely nullifying it because this always works but um I'm not sure that reducing the effects of certain debuffs by 30% is going to be super impactful. Like, there's a lot of 40% or 39% debuffs, so this would break that down to like 26 or 27%, um, which isn't as much. I mean, yeah, that's a reduction, but um, the buffs aren't already too massive as it is. Um, given that the base stat that they're working off of isn't as big as you would generally think it is. Um, so reducing that by a lot, this is, this is easily probably the least impressive thing here. But what is impressive is increasing chance of being targeted by five for self. This is something that a lot of modernized tanks have gotten because, you know, while we were talking about AOE resistance, not necessarily being a way to, to resist damage so much as it is an AI modifier that keeps your friends safe because people will use single target damage to target you. Although the new multi-hit single target damage moves such as uh, what Edward has, which is going to punch straight through this guy, he's still weak, very weak uh, to strike and physical damage. So Edward is going to be a hell of an opponent for him. Um, also, Amnilus, who has a similar... And, then, and there are other units that have this. He is at least resistant to magic, so that's good for him versus Amnilus. But she's still going to be able to single target hit him and someone else. Also, she's a water type unit. He is fire. So maybe that makes some of his resistances a bit more of a wash. But there are going to be certain units that can single target damage him and hit people near him. But that's really going to narrow down the number of people who can take out the people standing around Rain um, to make it pretty low. So, you know, I think this is a pretty good, uh, that the AoE's, AoE resistance stacking is a pretty good modifier for him. Um, but the decreased chance of, or, I'm sorry, increased chance of being targeted that is applied as a passive, which means as soon as the fight starts, he is going to have hate. And 
I've talked about this before on the channel, but what that does, it's a huge AI modifier for the way that things work because a lot of people, if you're really tuning your team, you have them set up for a certain buff pattern. You want certain units to move at certain times to certain places so that they can be in the right place to set up buffs in a way that you want. This is a big part of team building for any map. What initial hate does though is it can cause your units to ignore that. In any other fight they would have done exactly what you wanted but you go up against initial hate all of a sudden they're all moving to the left or the right side of the map or whatever and it's just throwing off your game plan. Even before, even, even if we're not talking about the fact that this is going to allow Rain to take two or three hits for his allies, which is usually how you think of hate, even if it weren't for that, just the ability to throw off your opponent's best laid plans from the very beginning of the fight, even if you're the slower team, that is huge. That is a huge modifier to the way that he is going to work and be effective in combat and I think that's a big deal for him. Even though I wasn't a big fan of the buff effect weakening 30 for self, I think that getting initial hate on a passive is just huge. Also because this is going to be active at the beginning of every fight. So on defense, not that, I mean he gets perined uh, so hard. like. She has a single target move that will absolutely destroy him. It will violate every one of his weaknesses simultaneously. She will destroy him. I'm not saying that he's unbeatable or maybe even a defensive choice, but potentially if you had a very durable defense team that featured Rain, he could proc this off. He would get that initial hate at the beginning of every defensive fight that he was in, no matter how many there are. Even if 10 teams try to take him down, I don't think any team can last for 10. Um, and, and maybe even certainly not one with rain on it, unfortunately. Um, but even if that were the case, he would have opening hate in every one of those fights and he would screw with their turn order and the way that they set up in every one of those fights. Now there are, this isn't super special. There are a lot of other tanks that can do this, but as I'm pointing out, this does modernize him because a lot of other tanks can do this. So does it make him special? No, but does it make him viable? Well, I think the answer to that is definitely yes. And then for Laswell, let's talk about his brother. Because his brother also got a really similar treatment. Laswell is a first generation unit, so he's been around for a while, but he's also kind of the secondary protagonist of the original FFBE game. And what he's getting from his Dream Awakening is going to be 20% attack. Just good, right off the bat. Especially because he is, I don't want to say he's like a glass cannon, but he is very accurate, he's very critical based, and he can do a lot of damage. He also um, was a unit that ended up with a lot of penetrations a bit earlier than others did. So he's, um, he has a lot in common with say a second generation DPS because they brought him back into the second generation. Like they, they I think they arguably did a better job of making Lastwell viable for second gen than they did Rain. Um, but at the same time, not a lot of people used Lastwell either because there were a lot of other good units in ice at that time. Uh, evasion rate of 15, it's pretty big. Like, I'm not going to say that that is not good. It is good. Um, he is, he has evasion potential. The thing is, I don't think that he has kept up with evasion. I think that even with this 15 evasion rate, there is still a pretty limited number of units that he is going to be particularly evasive against. But he does have the potential for it, and I think this does improve that, so it's okay. But I'm not, I'm not a super big fan of that. I don't like that as much as I liked like everything that was on Rain. But decreased chance of being targeted three is a pretty big deal because he is again good at being a defense or slash attack penetrator. So he's good at you know dealing good, reliable tank busting damage. He's also a critical hit unit, 
Um, he has a lot of things that, that increase his critical hit. For example, as a part of his master ability too, he restores 10 AP when performing a critical hit, which is a pretty big deal. Um, but he's also a pretty accurate unit as it is. Um, accuracy and evasion and critical. It's a really interesting spread for him, which gives him a lot of potential. But in addition to that, he has the skill Mirage, which allows him to completely negate one hit of damage. It's a shield that just stops one, one shot of damage. So with decreased hate of three, he's going to be able to get two attacks off before he has positive hate and people will start targeting him. Um, if there's anyone else around, if he's all by himself out there, they're still going to target him regardless of his negative hate. But if there's like literally anyone else around, they'll try to attack them first. Um, so if you think about him being good at landing a critical hit and knocking someone off the map, then maybe the decreased hate gives him the opportunity to do that with one person or get close to it. And then suddenly he has a bit of hate and then they hit him, but he has a mirage shield. So he doesn't die that turn either. So then he gets the opportunity to take them out and kind of trade one for one with one of their units, or maybe he even gets the opportunity to take one out and do damage to another. Um, I just find him to be a really effective unit for trading with your opponents. If you can get him in range and get him dealing damage fast enough. Um, and I think that that is only going to get better with the decreased chance of being targeted for himself. So a lot of those things are really going to help him do a lot of the things that he was already pretty good at doing. Um, but in terms of flavor here, let me see if I can translate. Purple lightning flashed and woke up. Okay, that's a funny translation. Um, wow. I'm, um, that was so weird that I'm gonna have to look up what it actually says in global. I forgot entirely what it does. Blade flash, oh. Oh, that's unfortunate, actually. Well, I don't have quite as much to say about this as I thought, um, because we are going to talk about flavor. Because a Mirror of Awakening is like, uh, no. Mirror of Retro... The mirrors are a thing throughout season one and season two for Laswell, him learning greater and greater mirrors um, is a thing. So this is the mirror that he starts with. And um, I think this is a mirror that a later version of Laswell got. You can see how it's kind of a direct upgrade to this one, which is a really bad attack. That This is terrible. This is absolute trash. <laughs> um, this is much better. <laughs> But this is what he got with his 120 Awakening. So it, it seemed like at first, maybe, maybe he would be getting, you know, upgrades to the mirrors. And eventually he would work into some of the story mirrors that he had in season two that were supposed to be so powerful. That were kind of like the pinnacle of his power and training. This would be a really good story related thing as an FFB player to play into as this character gets upgraded. Unfortunately, they've put a lot of time and effort into upgrading Blade Flash, which is a really cool skill for this character. It helps him do a lot of the things that he does well. Good skill, again, good skill. I'm not, I'm not hating on it and I do like the upgrade. I just think that the flavor would have been a lot better if we had done this upgrading the Mirror of Retribution or uh, Mirror of... Uh, hold on, which mirror is this? Oh my God, I've forgotten. Oh, it just says Mirror, God damn it. That's not helpful. How about this one? Spiegel Kasami? What the fuck does that mean? 
that uh, this isn't even English. Neither of these words are English. What's happening here? Okay, I'm confused. Um, so let's actually talk about the the upgrade. So it is still a single target attack, but now you can choose up to two targets. It does huge damage for very low AP. Um, it is going to be a select up to two targets. It's going to have a 38% ice resistance decrease and a 210 mod. This fucking and forecasts. This move is just getting insane. This is fucking ridiculous. And the modifier can go from 210 to 270 if the target has haste which is becoming increasingly common. It's becoming a more and more kind of expected part of a lot of the setups for a lot of units and a lot of elements. So giving an, getting up to a 270 modifier, which is absolutely nuts. Um, if a, a unit has haste and being able to hit multiple targets, um, just in case they were AOE hasting, this is, this is just, this is gonna hit like a ton of bricks. Also, the ice, the decreased ice resistance is now happening before damage is dealt. Previously it wasn't. So this, oh my god, this is just gonna hit like a fucking ton of bricks. This is gonna be like the fucking, this is gonna be like getting hit by a goddamn avalanche. I love it. It is amazing. I just, I, I really wish that it could have been on one of the mirrors. I really wish that we could be working from like Mirror of Retribution to Mirror of Enlightenment to something. I don't know. I feel like that is a huge flavor miss for Gumi, but holy shit, this guy's powerful. And like, you see what I mean now? 18 AP is nothing, nothing, nothing. And he's getting so much out of it at this point. It's ridiculous. So now think about this guy not being initially targeted. Think about your units wanting to do everything but hit him. And then when they finally do realize, oh, this last well guy that's already murdered half of my team might be a threat, they try to hit him and it, it just bounces off the Mirage Shield. So yeah, this guy I think is a pretty big deal. I really like this upgrade. And I think that he needed less than um, Rain did, but I also think he got less than Rain did. So my overall opinion of the brothers is that while they're not maybe on par now with what third generation units are doing, what the newest releases are doing, for first generation units, I think they're doing as good as most second generation units with Awakenings are now. Like. They have kept up better than their peers that were released around the same time as them. Now, as they are older units and as they are just being awakened, you know, I, I don't think Gumi wants to make them quite strong enough to step on the toes of the newer units that they want you to pay for. But for people who have been building up a last well or rain in the background since I started playing this game, hoping for a day like this to come, your day is here, my friends. It is time to make the brothers of FFBE great again. <sighs> All right, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you are excited for this, let me know in the comments. Also, while you're going down there on your way, if you could just expand that description, click the link, check out the link tree, there is a whole Jackie Fox Media empire of podcasts. I've got a ton of podcasts now. Um, videos, ways that you can donate to the channel. And even if you don't click that link, oh, you can also join our Discord. That would be great. That is, um, we're just doing a lot of stuff there. There's not a ton of people there yet, but love to have you. And I would, I would be very happy for you to join. That's all I'm saying. Um, so join the Discord so uh, while you're hitting that link. And if nothing else, like and subscribe. Or, at the very least, tune into the next video where I can see you in the next one.